Welcome to a fascinating journey into the turbulent waters of history. In today's video, we delve into a captivating tale of conflicts and negotiations that shaped the destiny of nations over a precious resource cod. This is the story of the Cod Wars, a series of confrontations between the United Kingdom and Iceland that unfolded amidst the crashing waves of the North Atlantic. From the daring extension of fishing limits to the clashes at sea, we'll unravel the motivations, strategies and impacts of each Cod War. These conflicts weren't just about fish. They were about sovereignty, livelihoods and the evolving principles of international law. Join us as we navigate through the tumultuous waters of the First, Second and Third Cod Wars, exploring the challenges faced by both nations and the moments that led to diplomatic resolutions. We'll uncover the lessons learned and how these conflicts contributed to shaping modern concepts of maritime boundaries and sustainable fishing practices. So fasten your seatbelts as we embark on a voyage back in time, uncovering the drama, the strategies and the legacies of the Cod Wars. Don't miss out. This is history on the high seas and it's about to unfold before your eyes. The first Cod War emerged against the backdrop of post-World War II changes in fishing technology and practices, which led to increased exploitation of fish stocks in the North Atlantic. Iceland, a nation heavily reliant on its fishing industry, was witnessing a decline in its cod population due to overfishing by foreign trawlers, particularly those from the UK. The Icelandic government, under the leadership of Prime Minister Hermann Jonasson, took a bold step by unilaterally extending its fishing limits from 4 to 12 nautical miles in September 1958. This move was aimed at protecting Iceland's fish stocks and safeguarding its vital economic resource. The extension of territorial waters led to immediate clashes between Icelandic patrol vessels and British trawlers. The British government, representing the interests of its fishing industry, argued that international customary law allowed for innocent passage through territorial waters for fishing purposes. However, Iceland maintained that its sovereign rights over the waters were paramount. As tensions escalated, there were incidents of Icelandic patrol vessels cutting fishing lines of British trawlers and even the arrest of foreign vessels. The British government sought diplomatic solutions and appealed to NATO for mediation. Eventually, NATO brokered a compromise in 1961 that allowed British trawlers limited access to Icelandic waters within the 12-mile limit. This was a significant victory for Iceland, marking the first time a nation had successfully extended its fishing limits, albeit through tense negotiations. Then, about 10 years later, the Second Cod War was triggered by Iceland's announcement in November 1971 that it was unilaterally extending its fishing limits to 50 nautical miles from its coast. This move was motivated by the continuing depletion of fish stocks and Iceland's resolve to assert greater control over its maritime resources. The UK, still a major player in the fishing industry, vehemently opposed this extension arguing that the new limits encroached upon traditional fishing grounds. The confrontations between Icelandic patrol vessels and British trawlers intensified, with instances of ramming and even the collision of naval vessels. The UK's decision to deploy naval warships to escort its trawlers marked a significant escalation of the conflict. The situation strained diplomatic relations between the two countries, and even led to a temporary severance of diplomatic ties. International pressure mounted on both sides to resolve the conflict, with the United States, as a NATO ally, playing a crucial role in facilitating negotiations. The situation eased in June 1973, with a temporary agreement known as the Cod Peace, which allowed for a resumption of fishing in certain disputed areas. While the Second Cod War did not result in a permanent solution, it highlighted the complexities of managing shared fishing resources and the challenges of reconciling national interests. This would not be the end, however, 
as the Third Cod War was the most protracted and impactful of the conflicts. It was sparked by Iceland's unilateral declaration in 1975 of an exclusive economic zone or EEZ extending 200 nautical miles from its coast. This move was in line with emerging principles of international maritime law and the concept of sovereign rights over marine resources beyond territorial waters. Iceland's declaration of the 200-mile EEZ drew strong international opposition. Nations heavily reliant on fishing, including the UK, viewed this expansion as a direct threat to their fishing industries. Sanctions were imposed on Iceland, including trade restrictions and diplomatic isolation. The Icelandic economy faced significant pressures, and there were even instances of confrontations between Icelandic vessels and foreign warships. Diplomatic negotiations, held under the auspices of the Third United Nations Conference on the Law of the Sea, eventually led to the signing of the Agreement on Fisheries between Iceland and the UK in June 1976. This agreement recognised Iceland's 200-mile EEZ while allowing certain quotas for foreign vessels. It also established a framework for future cooperation and management of shared fish stocks. In conclusion, the Cod Wars were a series of conflicts and negotiations that revolved around Iceland's determination to protect its fish stocks and assert control over its maritime resources. These conflicts highlighted the challenges of managing shared fishing grounds and the evolving principles of international maritime law. The Cod Wars ultimately resulted in agreements that acknowledged Iceland's territorial claims and contributed to the development of modern concepts of exclusive economic zones and sustainable fisheries management. And that wraps up our journey through the captivating saga of the Cod Wars. From territorial disputes to diplomatic breakthroughs, these conflicts have left an indelible mark on the history of maritime relations. If you found this exploration intriguing, don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more engaging historical content. Thank you for joining us on this voyage into the past, and until next time, stay curious and keep exploring.